Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now, this is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject and then I move on to the next subject. It's always quick. It's always snappy. You never know what you're going to get. Now, today I'm going to be doing another one of the most popular five by fives that we do on this channel, which is where I sit down with a performer or a magician or a creator and I get them to perform their five favorite tricks from their set. And then I talk to you about why they're such a good choice. Now, I've done this with people like Nemeth Phoenix in the past, Alex Foden, Wayne Goodman, and they're always really popular. One thing that I love doing, and it's why I love conventions so much, is I love seeing what other magicians do as their thousand timer. You know that trick that you do, um, that you know inside out, back to front and upside down? Uh, I find that fascinating. So every time I'm in a situation where I'm with a magician, I, I like to film this stuff. And it allows me to do a five by five for you guys. And today I'm going to be doing it on Roman Armstrong. Now, if you don't know who Roman Armstrong is, he's brought out what I consider to be one of the top tricks of 2022, which is hard stretch. He brought it out with Alakazam Magic. Um, and I've known Roman for years. I've known Roman so long. I did his 10th birthday party. Um, you know, I, I was booked by his mom to do his 10th birthday party. Known Roman for years. He's worked with me in Nonstop Kids and Slightly Unusual for a very long time. This footage was filmed um, back in September or October, I think it was. And I'd gone to Alakazam with Matt um, and I was filming a bunch of stuff. But uh, Roman was filming some stuff at Alakazam as well. And I took the opportunity to get Roman to sit down and, and, and perform his five or five of his favourite tricks with Matt. Um, now, this is really before the Matt test started. So Matt's in full on muggle mode in these videos. Um, but yeah, I mean, Roman is such a workhorse. He's an incredible magician, an incredible close up magician, a great stage magician, great kids entertainer. And his choice of material is nothing short of fantastic. So... Without further ado, we're going to go into this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, basically, the format's going to be very simple. I'm going to play you a trick of Roman performing this to Matt at Alakazam. And then once he's performed the trick, I'm then going to bring it back into the studio, tell you what I like about it, and we're going to keep going until we've covered all five tricks. So here we go. It's a five by five special, all on Roman Armstrong. Are you? Yeah, 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 I'm really good. I'm Roman, by the way. I know you are. <laughs> yeah. I just like to have a formal introduction every time I uh, meet people. So Craig's in there filming yeah, with Ryland, yes. an exciting new. Yeah, I keep it quiet. So I thought I'd show you some quiet magic. Cool, let's do it. Do you want to see something? Actually, we're going to start with something with uh, that's very uh, high stakes. Have you seen Squid Game? Yeah. Do you know kill me? No, 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 no. Okay, good. No. I mean, close to, the closest thing to killing you. Do you know in Squid Game, the game where there's the bridge and it's made of glass? Yeah. And one of the panels of glass is like tempered. So yeah. if you stand on it, boom, it's going to shout, you're going to fall 100 feet to your death. Yeah. Um, and the other one is perfectly safe. And if you get to the end, then you're fine. Unless you're in Squid Game, and then they'll just shoot you up from the bottom, and uh, you get cut on your face and all sorts of things. Spoilers, right? But you've seen it already. But I have, yeah. we're going to play a version of that game right now. Obviously, I don't okay. actually have glass. That's good. Okay, I just got these cards, but um, there's something uh, about these cards that I'm going to show you later on. Okay. Um, now I want you to imagine this is a bridge. You're going to walk across this bridge of glass. Okay. Some of these panels are safe. Some are very dangerous. Obviously, if you were to do this right now, it'd be really dangerous. So this wallet's going to represent you to keep you safe. Okay, good. Okay. So which one do you want to start on? We'll start at this end. We'll walk, we'll walk this way. So, and if you get to the other end, you can see some more magic. All right. So okay. which one? Which one do you want to start on? Do you want to start on this one or that one there? Uh, that one. Are you sure? Because that's the one that my wallet's already hovering over. Yeah, well, well, you can change your mind if you want to. As soon as we eliminate the other one, that's it. But it's, it's, a, it's a dancing thing. You always start on the right. Start on the right. Yeah. Well, it's the left for me, but that's fine. Okay. We'll put it in here like this. That one's eliminated. Next. Next. Uh, no. Oh, diagonal. Yeah. It's a dancing thing, isn't it? Do we to get rid of this one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I dance. Badly, but still. Uh, do you want to go uh, this one or this one? This one. Interesting. I put you off going diagonally, didn't I? Because I mentioned it. You can change it, by the way. It's up to you. Okay, that one. Oh, damn it. Okay, you sure? Do we get rid of this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Okay, last one, do you want to go on this one or this one? Which one? You want to walk here and get rid of that one. Yeah. If you want to change it and go this way, you can. No, I want to take that one. You want this one? Yeah. You want to get rid of this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really interesting. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll show you these, okay? So, if you had gone for any of these, all right, um, well, there's not really anything on these. They're um, they're all blank, all right? Okay. But this was the route that you took. Yeah. Right. Remember, if you get to the other end, you can see some more magic. Okay. Okay. So this one, oh, this is death. Oh, that's not good. That's no, not a good start, is it? Um, technically, you're already dead. But okay. if you hadn't died, you've gone to this one. It is. Oh, that's also death. <laughs> I mean, sure. Look at this one. Yeah, death. And last one, death. Okay, that's not. Um, do you want to see some more magic anyway? <laughs> yeah. I died four times in one trip. <laughs> It's so bad. It is bad. We're all thinking it. <laughs> Don't play Squid Game. I won't. <laughs> I'm going to avoid it altogether. There you go. First trick that you just saw, uh, you guys might recognise it because I talked about it on this channel over the summer. This is a trick uh, called, I think it's Dangerous Shores or Dangerous Tides. I might be wrong. Um, but it's in Tom Stone's new lecture. So I saw him lecture on this at the IBM Magic Convention, and then he lectured on it again, and I saw him lecture it again uh, at the Magic Circle, uh, at their gala show, at their, uh, their first convention. And uh, man alive, this is a great trick. Now this is a perfect example for me of taking somebody's trick and making it your own. So the original Tom Stone trick that used the blank cards Tom talked about growing up in, uh, uh, you know, like a country where there's a lot of ice and you develop a psychic power to know when you're going from ice plane to ice plane, which is safe and which aren't safe. And that's how Tom presented it. And what Roman's done is he's taken that same presentation, which uh, that same trick, technically it's exactly the same trick. It wouldn't work for him. So instead, he's turned it on its head and he's given it a Squid Games presentation, which I think is genius. You know, Squid Games is incredibly popular. Even now, a year or so after it's been on, season two is coming out soon. Squid Games is incredibly popular. And any time that you can kind of bring Squid Games into a presentation, especially for the right audience... Um, you're on for a winner. You know, I've talked in this in the past on this channel about hook lines and the importance of hook lines. Well, this is a great hook. Hey, who's seen Squid Games? Well, you know, do you remember the scene with the bridge? Well, let me show you something. We're going to try and do that right now. I love this. Absolutely love this presentation. Super smart. And, and I talk about this all of the time, about the importance of making a trick your own. And that doesn't mean changing the way you do it from a method point of view. It doesn't mean changing the way you do it from a technical point of view. Sometimes it can mean just making the presentation fit your character or fit your interests more. And that's exactly what Roman's done. Now, this is a great trick anyway. When I did the 5x5 five five on the IBM convention, I raved about this trick and I raved about it for a reason. And the reason is it's an amazing trick. It really is. It's very practical. It's an instant reset everybody feels like they've got a completely free choice it's typical tom stone genius thinking however um in my opinion because i'm also not from a place where there's a lot of ice like tom stone is uh and so in my opinion i think that uh this is a presentation that's even better for this trick and definitely one that i'm going to adapt in my own work so yeah a brilliant first choice shows the versatility of roman as well he's not just a kid's entertainer you know you wouldn't do this at a kid's show uh you know he can do it all and then some so that was a really good first choice uh we're now going to have a look at trick number two so this is a uh, this is a trick that I usually show people that um, are alive, but you're dead. So <laughs> um, four times, yeah, four times. We'll give it a go. Um, there are a few cards here that uh, I, I don't want you to pick. Okay, so I'm going to take them out. Don't, don't look at them yet. I'll okay. show them in a second. All right. Bloody hell! For someone who's dead, you're a <laughs> bit over enthusiastic, aren't you? Okay, so Matt, you're going to choose one of these cards. It really doesn't matter which one you take. But just take any one, any one you like. Not that one. Oh, uh, <laughs> do you want that one? Show it to the, to the camera that I'm, I've been told to ignore. Yeah. <laughs> so for all I know, you just held it up like that. That's it. So yeah. Okay, um, put it here for me. Okay. In case the camera didn't see. That's it. There. Yeah. 
Um, are you good at uh, mixing cards? I could mix cards. You can mix cards. If you take these, can you just mix them up like this? Just shove it in, scramble them up. You want to shuffle them? Yeah, shuffle them. But I'll tell you what, when you've shuffled them, can you put them in the box? Uh, yeah. And then shut the box and then put it in an old box. Can hold it? Put them on the table. Okay. Are you happy? Always, mate. Put, put, the, put, put them here, okay? Um, so I took out some cards before we started. Um, these are the kings. You didn't choose a king, did you? No. You couldn't have, because I took them out at the start. <laughs> um, but we've got the, uh, the, it's not a joke, it's a fact. Um, these are the black kings, these are the, uh, the red kings. Um, I like to do this trick with the black kings, okay? okay. Um, but the, the red kings, they don't, I don't like them, right, basically. What have they done? Huh? What have they done? They've disappointed me before, okay? Oh, but, okay. But, but the black kings... Let's not go into that. No, we'll go into that. But the black kings, they do a really good trick, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wave them over the pack, okay? Your card's going to jump out, it's going to do five somersaults, it's going to land invisibly, in between the black kings. Invisibly, that's the important bit, okay? Watch. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, it's jumping out. Five, oh, six somersaults, it's landed, it's showing off. Should we have a look? Should we see what card has landed in between these kings? It is, in fact, one card, and one card only. Have a look, what is that card? It is, turn it over. Oh, uh, hang on. I told you I didn't like these two. Um, sorry. They have a, the, I don't want to touch it. Oh, dude. I don't want to touch it. Really? Turn it over, turn it over. It's five by five, which means we've got to do it in five minutes, so hurry up, please. <laughs> Is that the one? Oh. How did you do that? What the fuck? <laughs> no. 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 <clears throat> okay, so that was another great trick. Now, I didn't ask him whose trick that was. However, I'm fairly sure, I'm 98% sure, that that was another Tom Stone trick. I've got to be honest, I'm pretty sure it's another Tom Stone trick. I remember learning that and performing it on the Wizard product review from years ago. If it's not the Tom Stone trick, then it's a variation thereof. But it reminds me very much of a Tom Stone trick from, I think, Maelstrom, one of his books, or it could have been uh, the other one, I'm not too sure. But uh, Tom has an ability to take magic especially card magic and just turn it on its head and 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 just develop really well thought out sequences and and this is a perfect example of a card trick that hits them and hits them hard you know it's a regular if it's a card trick i'm thinking of and i'm 99 percent sure it is um it's a regular deck of cards in use there's no gimmicks there's no extras um and and i love the way that roman presented it you know i hate the i hate the kings we're going to put the kings over there the red kings we don't need the red kings we're going to use the black kings and have a look back and watch this performance again and have a look at the control that he uses first time i saw this it flew straight past me the control is brilliant because it feels like the spectator is shuffling the cards into the deck he's doing everything and, and, and yet he's in full control of that card the entire time. Very nice routine when it came to the control of the card, I thought. And, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's, I talk about this in, in, on this channel in the past, that sixth sense moment, that moment where, you know, you've put the Red Kings over there, they're aware they're over there, but you're putting no importance on them. You're telling them that you're going to find the card using the Black Kings. You say that you found it, and when they take that card out, that face-down card... The magic happens in their hand because as they take that card out and turn it over, it splits in their hand into the two Red Kings, which is incredible. And then you've kind of got that moment where you go, but the Red Kings were over there. No. Oh, my gosh. It can't be really super strong. This is the sort of stuff that plays big. And you know what? I haven't done this trick in a long time. I'm going to go back and dig out my copy of Maelstrom and I'm going to go and find it and relearn it because this is a cracking routine. Um, and, and you need more tricks like that. You need more tricks that are just like everyday regular deck of cards, shuffle deck of cards in use. This is brilliant. Really great second choice. He's hitting it out of the park and then some. Let's have a look at trick number three. Can I show you something you've never seen before? Yes. Okay, this is a classic of magic. It's called Coins Across. Okay. Okay, and uh, have a look at these coins, make sure they're okay. Uh, they're not actually okay, do you want to know why? Why? They're crakes. 
Oh, it's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, that's my plan <laughs> after this. <laughs> okay. So, um, what we're going to try to do, as I said, coins across, the idea is you take uh, four coins, we're going to make them travel one at a time from this hand all the way to this hand over here. Ready? It goes on three. One, two, three. That's the first coin. That's a usual reaction. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, have a look at that coin, make sure it's right. That's the first one that's travelled. We're going to do it again. So the interesting thing is now there's a coin already here, you should hear the moment the second one lands. Ready? So watch, gonna flip this one up. It's gonna land there. That's two coins. <laughs> okay, have a look at those coins, make sure they're all right. You good? Yeah. yeah, they're okay? No magnets or trapdoors or anything? No. Have a look at those two, make sure they're fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll put, put them here. Sorry. We're going to do the next one, and I'm going to tell you how I did it. Okay. So what I have, I know you can't see them, but I've got invisible sleeves on. Right. Everything's invisible. Everything's invisible. I'm going to shoot this coin up this invisible sleeve, over my visible shoulders, down this invisible sleeve over here. And you can hear it land. There we go. Three coins. Last one. I want you to help me with this one. Is that all right? Yeah. Is it good? Actually, can you hold your hand up for me like this? Close your fingers. Turn your hand over. This last one's really difficult, okay? Because you're holding onto the coins this time, Matt. You got them there tight. Perfect. Watch. On three. One, two. You don't have to count along. It's fine. <laughs> last one. Three. three. It's disappeared. There's nothing connecting the two of us together. No invisible sleeves, no tubes in between us. Open your hand, what's there? Open it. In my hand. You know what? Your jaw drops so much, I could have loaded one of them coins in your mouth. You probably could. Yeah. <laughs> so, interestingly, not a card trick. Not a card trick. Uh, it's a coin trick. And you know what? I love coin magic. And I'm not too sure whose coin trick that is. I think it might be an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different routines that Romans put together to create this, this routine that fits him perfectly. Um, but it's an example of what you can do with coin magic without gimmicks. I mean, as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong here, but uh, there's no gimmicks. There's no extras. It is literally what it appears to be. Just four regular coins. And I love... Is Hang Ping Chen. I really do. I, I, I don't. I, I'm a big Hang Ping Chen fan, uh, and and I love using the Hang Ping Chen, the Gallo Pitch, the Shell Ping Chen, Purse Ping Chen, all of the all of the Ping Chens. I'm a big fan of, and I love to see it intelligently used in a routine. And I love the way he used it here. Hey, look, these are the two coins that have already gone. Examine those. Brilliant. These are the two coins that are left to go. Examine those. Brilliant. Each phase builds. When, you, when you're working on a multi-phase routine like this, it's really important that each phase builds and each phase gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what we have here. Go back and watch the performance again and watch each individual phase. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Each phase gets stronger uh, right up to the crescendo where the magic happens in the spectator's hands. You know, you don't need gimmicks. You don't need extras. You don't need anything. You can just do really strong commercial coin magic with just four regular coins. And that's what we have here. Really super impressed with this trick. Really super impressed with the handling. I need to speak to Roman about whose it is. I'm fairly sure it's his own. And he's kind of just amalgamated a whole bunch of routines together. But I'd like to know for sure. So now let's go into what I personally think is the strongest trick in the whole set out of everything that he showed me. I think this is the, uh, the or showed Matt, I think this is the best. Um, anyway, the, the, do you know what this is? It's an elastic band. No, it's, it's a magic elastic band. You should have realized that by now, okay? <laughs> right, I told Sorry. you what this is. Tell me, what is this? It's a magic elastic band. No, that's a normal elastic band. You only need one, right? So, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's interesting, okay, because when you connect it, they both look like normal ones because they don't go through not this way or this way or this way. But you find the sweet spot here, it melts through. Y you've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, apparently you're learning how to do that. I am. Okay, well, you maybe, I can't do it, maybe you I'm can learning. help, okay? So put your thumbs up like this. Thank you. Just boost my ego. There we go. You've heard that joke before as well, okay? <laughs> and um, can you open your fingers and close your thumbs? And I love the dance moves. Can you cl close your, are you in a musical? Can you, uh, can, can, can you close your things like that? Sorry, it's my five by five, not yours, mate. Okay, you get a weekly segment on this bloody channel, okay? Right, stop trying to uh, outdo me, okay? 
not my job. <laughs> so I'm so sorry about that. Um, so um, this time you're the eyes of the audience. So can you feel this? Yes. Okay. Can you feel this? Yes. Where do you want me to go? Do you want me to go here? Do you want me to go here? Where? Stop. Here? Yeah. Okay. You look in here. I mean, I can yeah. go there if you want to. Doesn't matter what. Goes right through. Slick, isn't it? I tell you what. Let's change it up a bit. Uh, I've got something in my pocket here. Uh, you can let go. You can let go. It's fine. Uh, I've got this. This is a ring. Do you want to check it out? It's got loads of them. You got loads of rings. Yeah, I think that will suit you. Does it go on my thumb? Um, Does it go on my thumb? I can keep that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. You happy? Yeah. As long as you're happy, that's the most important thing. Always. You're always, always happy. Do. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen you sad. It happens. Think... Just not on film. Not on film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as the camera turns off. <laughs> Miserable as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah. Um, so, um, what we're going to try and do, is this is interesting because the... I mean, you can't really hear it on here. This is soft, but this this is solid. Yeah, I just looked at it. This is stretchy, really, okay? There's no holes or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, this is the magic band. So, what if I flick it like this? It looks like the band melts through. We'll, we'll do it again, okay? One strand is through. Now that's two strands. <laughs> okay. But actually, could you put your hands on like this for me? Like this, like this, like this. Okay. Watch. Here we go. One, two, three, and it falls off. Nobody showed me that. <laughs> It doesn't stop there though, Matt. Wow. Okay. Can you see that the the, uh, the ring falls down like this, like this? Well, I've got mind control powers. Watch, ready? <laughs> Don't look at him. I'm the one with mind control powers. Can I touch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Strange, right? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Fuck? Hold it, hold it. Hold the ring. Tidy, that is. Oh, Ooh, yeah. God. Not too tight. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Squeeze it. Ready? One, two, three. Goes through. Whilst you're holding it. I tell you what. We'll try one more thing. We'll try one more thing. Hold your hand like this for me. Like this. Okay, can you get your other hand as well? Could you put it on top like that? Okay, perfect. You're going to guard that ring with your life. Okay? Perfect. And then afterwards you can run away with it. Okay? <laughs> can you feel this? The rubber band. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We're going to try to make this rubber band change places with the ring in your hand. Okay. Okay. Ready? It's going to happen on three. One, two, three. <laughs> what the fuck? See, when I said change places, I didn't mean physically, I meant in form. You see, now this. What the band has lost its stretch and if the band has lost its stretch what's happened to the ring inside your hand it's a rubber ring okay so what we had there is hard stretch that's right hard stretch or um you know part of hard stretch you know there's so much you can do with hard stretch i did a full review show special on this I did a, uh, you know, a full review show where I talked about absolutely everything. Since that review show special, over December, I was performing hard stretch every single chance I could get. And it is such a strong routine. Uh, it really is. And I've talked about this before. You can go and look at the review if you want a full in-depth um, kind of analysis of my thoughts on this routine. But the bottom line is this for me gives elastic bands a finale. You know, you see so many magicians that do crazy man's handcuffs and that's all they do. They just do crazy man's handcuffs and, uh, and nothing else. And there's no, it, they kind of just bring the bands out, do crazy man's handcuffs, put them away. For my money, this gives you a couple of really great options when it comes to the finale of a rubber band routine. And uh, both of the routines are great. I have performed both of them. I think the hard stretch one just just pips it a little bit uh, rather than mini me but i love mini me as well uh, what you're seeing here is super commercial close-up magic this is eye candy it's super visual it's the sort of stuff that you that, you, that laymen lap up they love seeing this sort of stuff where the, the magic happens in their hands you've got this incredible kicker that they don't see coming and having now performed it the moment where they open up their hand and the ring becomes squishy they've been holding it the whole time and they examined it oh my god 
Forget about it. That's one of the strongest moments in this whole routine. Hard stretch by any definition is brilliant. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. For me, it's one of the best tricks of the year. It's definitely gone straight into my set and I've been performing the hell out of it all through December. So if you do rubber band magic and you're looking for a finale, I mean, yeah, I don't want to turn this into an advert for Roman stuff, but I love the fact that he's released one trick to the magic community so far. I asked him to perform his five tra favorite tricks and, and hard stretch is one of them because there's a lot of people that bring magic out and they've never done it in the real world ever and it's just been brought out as a creativity exercise. That's not the case with Roman. He's doing this and he's going out and he's getting killer reactions with it. And I'm so glad he included it in this list. Um, do you want to hear a sad story? Not really, you've had a good day. But if it's part of the trick, then It's yeah. part of the trick. <laughs> Go for it. It's part of the trick. <laughs> um, it's a very sad story. Um, basically, uh, do you want to shuffle these cards? Give them sure. a mix? Uh, you have to be happy that they're really shuffled. Have a look through them as well, because if they're all right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, good. Good. Um, this is a very sad story, because I knew I was going to meet you. That's not the sad part. I was going to say what's sad about right, that. That's not the sad part. I knew I was going to meet you, and I thought, I want to make the most epic prediction ever. I was actually, I had this premonition when I was queuing up for Wicker Man at Alton Towers, which is an amazing ride. Have you been on it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great ride. So I was, I was in the queue, and I was with my girlfriend, and I said, Ellie, I'm going to meet Matt, and Matt's going to pick this card. And, and I've got a deck of cards on me, and I, I took the card, and I took it on the ride, and I, I held it up for the picture, because you know they always take a photo on the ride. And yeah. I held it up, and I bought the photo afterwards, and I was so excited and so excited. I was, I was queuing up, because Wicker Man had just opened it, I was queuing up for about uh, two, two hours, okay? So there was a lot of build-up to this epic prediction, and I have the photo with me in my wallet. Okay. Would you like to see it? What's sad about this? It sounds You'll strange. find out. We'll okay. Yeah, go for it. I mean, you have a look. You take it. Open it up. It's it's in my ID compartment there. Can you see that photo? Yeah. <laughs> see what's sad about it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the cards backwards. It's the wrong way around. <laughs> I queued up for two hours, and I held it the wrong way round. Oh mate. <laughs> so I felt like such an idiot. Um. Anyway. I made I made a vow that day that I'm never gonna make a, a, a mistake as, as bad as that again. Can you do me a favor? Can you just cut the cards for me? Cut them. Yeah, yeah, just do half. That's good. And could you put them there? Perfect. Yeah. Uh, we'll mark we'll mark the back cut. Um, I made a vow to myself <laughs> and and to my girlfriend. I said I'm never gonna get a trick wrong ever again because I was so really? embarrassed about that. You can keep the photo if you want. <laughs> I don't need it. Um, so I'm gonna try and read your mind, and if it goes wrong, I'm. Dead certain that it's not going to go wrong, right? Okay. If it goes wrong, I will. I'll give you uh, a reward. I, actually, I'll give you. I'll give you. Uh, I've got a tenner. I'll give you a tenner. Cool. Okay. Actually, I'll go one better than that. If this goes wrong, I'll go to a cash point. I'll take out a hundred, three hundred. I don't care. However much you want, I'll take it out. And I'll let you have it. This is on film. Yeah, it's on film. You can have it. Cool. Okay. If this goes wrong, you get that. Right? It won't. It won't go wrong. Okay. Right. Yeah, can you just um, take the card that you cut to there, have a look at it, show it to the camera, um, and uh, when you're happy, put it back in the deck, shuffle all the cards, I don't want to know where it is. Put it back in and shuffle them? Yeah, 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 and then when you've done it, let me know so I can turn back around. Because I know I'm a mind reader, but I, I have no idea when people stop shuffling cards. Alright, ready? Yeah? Okay. You good? Yeah. Okay, and then, uh, do you want to put them in the box? Get rid of them? We don't need them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So just think about this, okay? You um, you shuffled the cards before. Yeah. You cut any way you wanted to. Yeah. You looked through the cards, see if you're happy with the order, and you've got one card now in your head, okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to try to decipher what card you're thinking of. And if you lie to me, it's on camera, <laughs> right? Oh, shit. So, <laughs> so you can't lie and try and get the money off me, okay? Damn it. Can you just look at me for a second? Okay. Um, it's a black card, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That was just 50-50. Okay. Uh, but now I know it's a club for a spade, so again, it's another 50-50, but it's... It's a spade? No, okay. That's just a stab in the dark. And I know I'm right now from your reaction, okay? <laughs> 
The hardest part is getting the value. I know it's a spade, but can you just uh, out loud go through uh, in order, ace through to king, and then keep going uh, like it's a cycle? Can you do that for me, please? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. You started blinking around nine and ten, so I don't think it's one of the lower ones. I think it's a higher one. Can you just go nine, ten, jack, queen, king, nine, ten? Nine, ten, jack, queen, king, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, nine, Okay, stop. I think it, um, yeah, I think it's quite high. I think it's, it's a queen or a king. Okay, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've got a card. I think... If I get it right, please give you a famous. How the hell? What the hell? If I get it right, okay. In my best Midlands yeah, yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. King of Spades. It was. Yeah, it was. Oh, thank God for that. Whew. I'll be honest with you. I know I've been practicing mind reading and getting so that so that I don't owe people money. All right, but <laughs> yeah, but to practice I, that's all mentalism. Sense. But my favourite thing is magic. That's my favourite thing. Okay. So the wallet's been there the whole time, right? Am I that readable? Wait, 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 wait. The wallet's been here the whole time, yeah? Yeah. I haven't gone near the wallet. No. Watch. Can you pick up the wallet? Have a look at the photo. What? Yeah, the photo with the card that was the wrong way around. Yeah. Have a look. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> What the? Can you see that? <laughs> How is that possible? That is great. I had to go around 52 times. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. What the fuck? Did you okay, it? so that was the final routine. And oh my God, did we leave the best till last? I don't know. I still think it's hard stretch, but this is close. Now, I have been a massive fan of the Orphic Wallet even before the Orphic Wallet was released. Honestly, I think that the Orphic Wallet has become the standard flag bearer for magicians around the world now. It, the, the Orphic Wallet is the one that everybody uses, right? And for good reason. It's, it looks like an everyday wallet, and yet you've got this incredible peak and card to wallet and a whole bunch of other stuff built into it as well. Uh, and if you saw last week's 5x5, five five, you'll see of me actually using the Orphic Wallet at a gig, you know, for real paying punters. I love the Orphic Wallet and there's so much you can do with it. What Roman has done with this routine has taken the Orphic Wallet to a brand new dimension in my opinion. So what we have here is we have a use of the Orphic Wallet that I don't think anybody saw coming. The ability to change a photo into another photo whilst it's isolated right there in the ID compartment of the wallet with no palming and no moves is genius. What Roman has put together with this wallet is genius. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. This is such a ridiculously strong idea. Like, I was on the Orphic uh, tutorial. I was lucky enough to have Louis Laval and D. Christopher ask me to be on the, uh, the Orphic wallet. And I developed a whole bunch of routines for the Orphic wallet for magicians. I wish I had come up with this routine. I wish, I wish... I had come up with this routine. This is such an intelligent, clever use of the wallet. It is such a genius use of the wallet that I don't think anybody thought that you could do. And it's so great. I don't want to tip the method. Anybody who's got an Orphic wallet will know what Roman's doing. But I just love the whole, hey, I'm going to give you all of the money on my credit card if I get this wrong. And in that moment, in that, in that moment of just being completely unassuming and just it looks like it's just part of the patter you've done everything that you need to do the other thing that I love about this routine is or a couple of things there's so much to love about it but another thing that I love about the routine is the presentation I know Roman well enough to know he loves theme parks he loves roller coasters and he's 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 done what I always say is important when you're developing routines make it about something personal to you people will buy into that presentation and that's what he's done here. He's talked about roller coasters. He's talked about theme parks. He's talked about stuff that he's interested in. And that's all so important as well. 
And when you think about this trick, it's just a card revelation, right? That's all it is. But it's such a crazy good card revelation. It's like seven minutes of absolute just entertainment. And, and the way that it's all structured at the end when he shows that photo, you could give that away if you wanted to. You could print up a whole bunch of those photos um, and, and just give that photo away. And then in 10 seconds, take another photo out and reset it. Like, this is really strong. This is a really strong trick. And anybody who's watching this that has an Orphic wallet, I hope you've got excited because this one concept that Roman has shown here can take the use of an Orphic wallet in so many different directions that people hadn't even considered. So yeah, I love it. I think it's really great. Um, I think it's as strong as hard stretch. I mean, all of the material that Roman has presented uh, on this 5x5 is just amazing. But this one, in my opinion, next level. So there you go, guys. That is another magic live in the bag. No, it's not a magic live, is it? It's, it's a 5x5. Five five. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Roman Armstrong uh, for sitting down and sharing five of his favorite tricks with me. Uh, I think it was an incredible set and it just shows how strong a performer Roman is. And trust me, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this young man in the uh, in the coming weeks, months and years to come. Anyway, if you want to see somebody else uh, have this 5x5 five five treatment done on them, let me know in the comments down below. It's got to be a worker. It's got to be somebody who goes out there and works. That's got some really great tricks that they can share with me. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and check out The Net Tricks. It's www.thenettricks.com. You can get access to it immediately and see what all the fuss is about. I'm going to be back again tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock with the Magic Live and at 9 o'clock. Well, actually, another video. It's going to be uh, it's the Matchumentary. It goes up at 3 o'clock. Uh, 3 o'clock, next episode of the Matchumentary coming. It's going to be a good one this week. So make sure that you watch that. I'll be back again soon. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.